So Chris has had the opportunity to take a look at a brand new vehicle that has come into us here at Sarnet Television. Garrett Anstein, who is with Whelan Engineering, has dropped in. So we're going to take a look at it right now. Well, actually, they were taking a look at it a little earlier today, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. So let's go across and see what they're up to. Thanks again, Garrett, for cruising over. No problem. Can't believe we actually have like a sunny day. This is nice to be able to get yeah, out here and get, get some sunshine. Don't get too used to it, right? So Whelan Engineering and the new carbide car and the system that's tying into all this. It's pretty cool. So we'll give you a, kind of the, the little run. I know you're familiar with, you know, our older siren systems, well, Syncom Sapphire. Yeah. Um, Syncom Carbide does a lot of the same stuff, you know, that you're familiar with, with the programmability, with the weak hand light bars and mm -hmm. things like that but a whole bunch of layers past that. So we're able to um, not only do progressive flash battery control with the light bars like you're familiar with, but we can do the perimeter lights. We can now control all of the flash pattern uh, for body lighting, push bumpers, um, okay. dome lights or deck lights, uh, but then low power them as well too, which is a nice feature. So um, basically anything on the car, the front, the back, the inside, the outside, it's all able to tie into this and then this is gonna be the central control for everything? Correct, yeah. So rather than just having a 12 volt on signal mm -hmm. uh, to turn a light head on and use its internal flasher, the carbide is actually generating the flash pattern for you. So uh, level one can be slow, level two can get a little faster. Uh, we can go steady burn for takedown lights or a scene light if it's a white light head. Okay. Um, it looks just like the Syncom. Same exact size, uh, just more more going on to it. So okay. uh, the big difference you'll see here uh, is the it's a different USB plug, mm -hmm. uh, faster downloads, and there's also two of them. And this little new section right here uh, is where the second plug is at. This is for CAN port, which we okay. talked about briefly. We'll go into a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, and that's going to correspond with the best component for the carbide, which Correct. is going to be the yeah. OBD2 input. Yeah, that's really the fun part to get into. So we've always had um, door pin signals, part kill, uh, all these signals in the car that will do either shut off or turn on lights, mm -hmm. um, which we're used to. We've had for years and years, but people are wanting more safety features. Um, the cars are getting harder and harder to get those from. It's not, not like the old Crown Vic days where it's a 12 volt signal every time you do this, it's a variable voltage. Well, so. that's one of the things that I've been really noticing is the cars have been getting newer, the electrical has been getting a lot more advanced. Exactly. So like you just said, the good old Crown Vic and just yeah. conventional, what, 12, 16 volts and grabbing signals everywhere, it was yeah. easy. You really didn't even have to do much like a relay or control. Yeah. But if I remember right, on the chargers, these are running a low voltage system, so you can't yeah, just grab a door trigger, yeah. you can't just grab a signal from the transmission like you used to be able to. Yeah, so instead of being a, a zero volts at rest to 12 volts when it's on, it'll mm -hmm. go from like six to 10. You know, there's a variable voltage within there. So um, that being said, with all these features that we want to do, rather than have to take the signals from the car and diode isolate and really boost everything, we can use this. So what the CAN port is, is this plugs directly into, we'll do a little mock up here. Okay. Um, this is directly into your factory OBD2 plug. Okay. And then this portion right here would plug into the corresponding CAN port on okay. the box. Okay, so let me make sure. Okay, so that new connection point right there. Exactly, okay. so that would go into there. Um, with that, we just got our door pin signal, our trans range, high beams, I mean, the list goes on and on. I think you guys have, there's typically 28 options we can choose from in the software Sounds right. to yeah. do whatever you want to do with it. So, um, and the first question people have is why well, I'm using a radar or something else, or if I go into service, mm -hmm. we're not uh, completely monopolizing that OBD2 port. We put a pass-through plug here. So when you go in to get uh, a transmission upgrade at the dealership, or you have a radar system that plugs in via OBD2. Well, or even just, for compliances and DEQ, you still have the ability for them to just yeah. plug in. So anything servicing related, it's all still there. You just have exactly. the benefit of plugging into the car, instantaneous connectivity and yep. everything there making it easy. Yeah. So, and this is, um, it's important to mention we're only reading signals from the car. We're not commanding the car to do anything. Okay. So we can take all those signals. Uh, we can't tell the car to, you know, turn the brake lights on or, you know, roll windows up and down. It's simply pulling the information from the car to use so with our system. So it's taking advantage of what the car is being told to do stock wise and yep. then getting that signal and letting something spider off and take advantage of exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So thinking about, 
you open the passenger side door, that could turn off warning lights, same thing on the driver yep. side. So rather than needing to find a door pin or some wire in the vehicle and then spidering to that, everything's through the yeah, OBD. Exactly. Wow. So the whole the whole premise is to to do safety features, you know, for the officers. How do we make the car safer when it's on scene mm -hmm. or responding to scene? Uh, but without adding hours and hours and hours of installs, um, you know, labor hours for the guys that are building the cars. So, you know, it's it's much easier to, to click down. You and I build a program, have a cup of coffee, rewrite how the car works and transfer it than just to come out here and try to tap into, you know, drive and trans range and, and or the doors open and close and all okay. that. So it's a much simpler way to uh, to kind of tap into what all the cars have in there. So, so in addition to the Syncom Carbide, plugging in and unleashing a bunch of parameters that are in the vehicle, like Ford, Chevy, Dodge, yeah. the late model service stuff we're used to. What am I gonna need to look at as far as the products and then getting control with everything? So to really this? take full advantage of um, the programmability we have with Carbide, you wanna use a light that you're able to control and set to a, an on flash pattern. Okay. Uh, and the reason for that is like Syncom Sapphire and other siren controllers where when you, you go to the slide switch and go to one, two, three, it's turning an output on. Mm -hmm. And that's just a, a wire that's connected to a light that's using the internal flasher. Um, this one, if we set the light to steady burn, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a solo or a duo or a trio light head, um, we can tell it how to flash, when to flash, and go through there rather than just letting the light head either be on or off flashing. So then so. even, so okay, thinking about tri-color ions and using those around the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So blue wire, red wire, white wire for the three colors. So that means I set them to steady burn and then it all plugs in through this. And so, correct. okay, that saves a whole bunch of time as yeah. far as flash patterns and no sync wires. Goes. Yeah, no going through and changing and uh, dialing in your uh, flash pattern. It's all done via software. So, so and um, then like what I've been used to before, say if I'm going to do a Syncom Sapphire and I'm going to take advantage of plugging in one of the Whelan Liberty 2 bars, yeah. for example, in the WeCam port, I do the software programming all through this versus the bar and the Syncom separate. So then like what I'm used to there, the carbide is going to program all the rest of the patterns? It will, um, and it'll also do more now too, which is nice. So we talked briefly a little bit about the WeCan devices. Mm -hmm. um, you can not only do just a light bar, but we can do two internal bars. Not only do we have the RTX in the rear deck yeah. and then the Liberty 2 up on the top, but with those both being available as WeCan, so I can plug in two different WeCans now Correct. instead of just yeah. one only. Correct, multiple WeCan devices all through this port. Um, which is a different connector now to make it easier for you guys to gang up multiple devices. So, uh, so that's nice. So not only does Carbide have a bigger processing system, but now I can take advantage of basically plug in to yeah. WeCan based. Exactly. Yeah. So we can have light bar, uh, rear inner edge, front inner edge, WeCan expansion module. And then uh, everything syncs through the Carbide. So correct overhead is matching the rear so yeah. traffic advisor color displays exactly flash patterns wow. uh, TAs linked up and we can show you that here too as well um, and then the takedown feature is really cool on this car too where when you go uh, high beams not mm -hmm. only does the external light bar sync up but so does the inner edge uh, and the flash patterns are all lined up so basically this whole car can be synced up um, to change flash patterns or intensity um, as you see fit, basically. Sorry, I'm just taking a look at yeah. the design of the carbide, just a little bit more familiar. So nice thing too, when I'm thinking about this and the overall look, I mean, it has the new plugs, like you mentioned, the top and the fusing and stickering is appropriate for carbide. But as far as the footprint of this and power distribution electronics, this is the same casing size. Exactly, so yeah. with that, if I'm using the other systems and everything's laid out nice and engineered, I'm not gonna have any layout issue. Exactly. So. However, you're mounting it before with a, a sapphire, it's going to be a direct replacement size-wise. So, perfect. Well, you want to come check, and I'll show you a couple of the features we were talking about. Yeah. So the first one you'll notice here, which is is probably one of the biggest ways um, you and I have talked about this increasing officer safety is just as simple as when that door opened, we shut off yeah. the light. Which Sorry, I was spinning around behind yeah. you as you so were. There we go. Door, door close. The light is on. Doors open, officers either getting out of the vehicle or getting back in. Okay. Uh, light's not in my eyes. And more importantly, I'm not illuminated from behind. Well, and I also so. noticed, so in addition to the corner shutting off, which I've used to that, yeah. and grabbing a door trigger, the alley is turning off as yeah. well. 
And we can program it. I could do the, the whole, the, the back and the front, whatever you want to turn off. Okay. Uh, we could turn off at the bars position a little farther forward, maybe if you want to do the back corner as well. Um, so that's even another by... neat benefit through carbide and how communicative it is with everything. Yeah. I think I just made up a word there, yeah. but <laughs> I can adjust really anything in the bar. Yeah. Yep. You could turn off as much or as little as you want to. So that's one of those signals that we're getting from OBD2. I didn't know wires were cut to do that. It's all done through the CAN bus okay. uh, with the OBD2. Well, show me more. Yeah. So I'll show you the um, example on some flash pattern changes. So right now I've got the car in drive or, or, or neutral at this point. Um, so this would be like a level two sort of flash pattern. Okay. Uh, imagine I'm getting in the car at 50 miles an hour here. Um, so there's regular flash pattern. We'll go to three, a little bit more dramatic. As I go into park, you'll notice not only did the white light shut off, which is pretty typical um, for a park kill scenario, but we changed the flash pattern. So it slowed down, not only in the light bar, but the, the inner edge and the bumper lights and everything else have kind of slowed down uh, to go that. And if I go back, it's gonna kind of speed up again, up in the light bar and then slow down. So the reason for that is when the officer's on the side of the road, we don't need to have crazy fast flash patterns. We're finding better results for officer visibility as well as the public when they show up to have a little more slower subdued flash pattern, uh, allows the public to see better around the vehicle. Uh, but if we're running code and we're trying to get somebody to pull over at 80 miles an hour, obviously mm. we want to have a little more intensity. So then as far as the scene lighting function goes for secondary mode. Yeah. So. Uh, a couple different setups on this here. So there would be my, you know, takedown lights. Okay. Typical kind of sort of takedown light. Um, here is my scene light, oh, which should wow. turn on a little bit of everything. So overhead, inner edge, mirrors, tracers, ions. Wow. Yeah. So this is really neat too. So let's do a little scenario here, Chris. You're on the side of the road. Uh, the lights are on. The car is running. If you were to reach in, you didn't want to get in the car and turn your high beams on, mm -hmm. the lights will now override to the scene light button as if you had gotten in the vehicle, push the button. So uh, whatever the scenario is for you, DUI, whatever the stop point, you want to turn some white lighting on quickly mm -hmm. without getting in the car, um, simply turn the high beams on and you've got your scene light button turned on. So, And so that would be taking advantage of the OBD2 input. All OBD2, input. yeah. Okay. So uh, another neat feature with this too is the hands-free lighting. Okay. So we can have different siren tones associated with different flash patterns. Um, and where that kind of comes into play is intersection clearing. So okay. if, uh, typically officers, at least in our area, use piercer quite a bit for um, clearing intersections. So as they get to that point and they start to poke their nose through, they do their hands-free feature through the, uh, the horn ring. The vehicle will change flash patterns in the corners and the front to add more white lighting to aid them in going through the intersection. As soon as they get through, hit the tone again, back to regular level three or two, whatever they're in. So um, this is kind of a fun one too. Uh, air horn, uh, if you have those times where people aren't responding to the si lights and sirens, whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, all I'm gonna do is just hit my air horn button like I would typically to get someone's attention. But as I do that, the whole front of the bar will override and the push bumper into a white lighting. So. so for the push bumper, um, micro pioneers and then all your ions, those are overriding. Correct, wow. yeah. So we're changing that flash pattern through the software. Can so. you show me a little bit more with the overhead? Yeah. What would you like to see, Chris? <laughs> I can see just fine. You're not blinding me out, don't uh, worry. No, so what would you like to see? So uh, here, some different flash pattern scenarios. So there's level one, you can see I'm a little more subdued. Okay. Uh, level two gets progressively uh, faster. Uh, level three picks up even more. So another big uh, safety thing to show you is the brake light override. So mm, okay. uh, we talked about park light override, but when we're running code and we press our brake lights, now instead of the follow car not being able to see us because of you know warning light going back and forth, as soon as I press that brake, we shut off a certain number of lights and we also simulate brake lights in the light bar as well as the rear inner edge. We let off the brake, it goes back to normal.
So Chris, another really cool, neat new product for us is the WeCan external amplifier. Mm -hmm. So we've always been able to do 200 watt siren speakers. Now we're able to, because of that WeCan port, uh, we can do a separate WeCan uh, amplifier, which will give you two 100 watt amplifiers to do different tones, basically. So I can do proper dual tone. Exactly. So you want to hear what that sounds like? Yeah, yeah. So we'll go, here's a whale. And there's that, uh, that piercer flash pattern we were talking about, intersection clearing. That's the, the piercer flash pattern I was telling you about. So not only can we take advantage of dual toning, so one tone through each speaker properly at 100 watts, yeah. with the siren tone changing, lighting gets involved as well. Exactly. So that was my piercer intersection clearing uh, so, tone that we had set up. The lighting package, the siren package, advantage of the OBD2 port, and <laughs> yeah, maybe next time we shouldn't bring up the nice yeah, sunny maybe, day, huh? Maybe indoors next totally time, Totally huh? jinxed ourselves on yeah, that. exactly. So I'm inside the car, though, so I'm okay. I know. Well, it's okay. I'm an Oregonian tried and true. <laughs> I don't even have an umbrella. Well, there you have it. The Carbite system from Wheelan Engineering. Very interesting product. Great uh, chat going on there between Garrett and our illustrious Chris. The weather has changed, as you can see here in the Pacific Northwest, started off with a nice sunny day and ended with some rain, which is exactly what we need to keep the grass growing. I'm Stuart, you've been watching Siren Television. Have a great day.